Hello everyone, in this video I will be showing you my new vacuum cannon. Now I know a lot of you are going to be saying, didn't I just make a vacuum cannon video? And I did, about two months ago I made a video about my 4 inch bore vacuum cannon, which is the largest vacuum cannon and the largest cannon in general that I've ever made. Um, that was made with a 4 inch diameter piece of PVC pipe, about 10 feet long. This one is only 2 inches in diameter and it's about, uh, about 8 feet long. Despite being quite a bit smaller, there's something that makes this cannon very special, and that is that it requires no vacuum pump. This handle here allows me to pull a piston from the front of the cannon all the way back, kind of like pulling a syringe while your finger is over the front. You're creating a vacuum inside of the syringe. This cannon works in a similar way. If you saw a video I posted about a month ago now, I made a piston for two inch diameter PVC pipe that is made from an inch and a quarter end cap and coupling. And I reused that piston idea for this cannon here. So this is the far end of the shaft that runs the length of the cannon. And you can see the front portion here is just the same piston that I made in my earlier videos that I used in my, uh, my piston valve air cannon, which I made a couple videos about. And I made one small change and that is to add another section. This is another quarter inch uh, or one and a quarter inch diameter coupling. Um, that I have sandwiched a second o-ring into. Uh, that just allows this to make an extra tight seal so that it can pull a very sturdy vacuum or a very, uh, a very strong vacuum without any leaks. Now originally, what I had on the front of this cannon to make a seal is a uh, flap valve. Let me show you that. So this is the flap valve that I had and I had it mounted. Let me push the piston in a little more. I had it mounted just like this, um, so that when I pulled the piston back, it would suck this flap valve against the opening of the barrel, and I wouldn't need to uh, create burst discs like I did on my previous cannon. Um, if you watch my video about my, um, about my four inch diameter cannon, you'll notice that as the cannon fires in my slow motion shots, the burst disc actually bursts before the projectile reaches it. And that's because it's not a perfect vacuum inside of there, and so the air pressure that remains inside the pipe is compressed as the projectile moves down the barrel and it bursts that, pit, that uh, burst disc before the projectile has a, actually has a chance to hit it. And that's what I was counting on when I'm using this flap valve to push the flap valve out of the way before the projectile came through. Unfortunately, that didn't work. The flap valve just couldn't get out of the way quite fast enough and so the projectiles were hitting this flap and shattering before they actually went anywhere. So I do still use a single burst disc on this end of the pipe, but on the back half of the pipe, I don't need anything at all. And I'll show you why that works in a second. Now here is my projectile for this cannon. This is just a one and a quarter inch end cap. It's the same sort of end cap that the front of the piston itself is made of. Um, now to fire these, what needs to happen is as I pull the shaft back and I'm pulling the vacuum, the projectiles are going to be front loaded, so the, the piston needs a way to actually pull the projectile back with it. So I'm just going to use a little, little squares of tape here and tape the projectile gently to the front of the piston. Um, I don't wrap tape all the way around or else the projectile may not actually come off when the can it's time to fire the cannon. I just use these little squares and then the piston presses straight into the pipe, just like that. You don't want to push it in too far or else you'll have more air inside the pipe than you need to have. And the less air you have in the pipe, the more powerful the cannon will be because the stronger the vacuum will be. Um, so once this is flush with the pipe, then we can close this off with a burst disc. Since this pipe is a smaller diameter than my four inch bore vacuum cannon, I only need two layers of aluminum foil to withstand the vacuum pressure. You sort of want the minimum amount of foil that you can get away with um, because then the burst disc will break more easily when it comes to time to fire the cannon, which allows less energy uh, to be wasted in bursting this disc, and uh, that leaves more energy to accelerate the projectile. So now we're at the part that makes this cannon really interesting. On this end of the pipe, you can see this uh, inch and a quarter diameter shaft is extending all the way to the end. Remember, the piston is on the other side, and there's a projectile that's now taped to it. Um, on the end of this uh, piece of pipe, you can see I have a hole that's drilled straight through to allow me to put in this piece of 
half inch diameter PVC to act as my handle, and I could have used a dowel as well. When I actually want to fire the cannon, if you saw my first video, I had a burst disc on both ends of the pipe, and in order to fire the cannon, I hit the burst disc on the back half of the cannon with a hammer, and that burst the disc, and air rushed in and fired the projectile. In this, it fires a little differently. Let me show you. <laughs> okay, so what just happened is I pulled the piston clear out of the pipe. There's no need for a seal on this end of the pipe because the piston itself is a seal as long as it's moving backwards. And when I want to fire the cannon, all I have to do is pull the piston out of the pipe and suddenly air can rush in. So with this design, all I need is a burst disc on the one end. So that saves a lot of time. You don't need a vacuum pump. All you need are PVC parts and a few O-rings for the piston. And the projectile, if you remember, I taped to the end of the piston. Now, because it was only lightly taped to the end, when this piston, when this piston was just about all the way out of the end of the pipe, suddenly air is wanting to rush back in, but the projectile is still in there because it was in front of the piston. Now, that air that's wanting to rush back in is at atmospheric pressure, which is a little less than 15 pounds per square inch. This is a two inch diameter pipe uh, to figure out the area. It's uh, the radius squared, the radius is one inch times pi times atmospheric pressure, which is about 15, you're at about 45 pounds of pressure trying to pull that projectile off of the front of the piston. So these little pieces of tape that I had holding, holding it on didn't stand a chance. The piston pulls out, the projectile's now exposed to all that atmospheric pressure, 45 pounds worth. So the tape gives way and the projectile launches down the barrel. So let's reload this thing, same as my other cannon, all you have to do is uh, pull the tape off, pull the old burst disc off, and uh, instead of wasting all this tape, I guess I can take a little bit of it to use to rehold the uh, next projectile on. So let me reload the piston. This just pops back into the end of the pipe. Now, one downside to this design is it does need to be held pretty firmly in place. So you can see I have some stakes in the ground with uh, wire and rope to keep this thing sturdy because it needs to withstand, well, 45 pounds of pressure as you're pulling that piston backwards without moving anywhere. Um, so I've just got uh, the pipe supported by these stands and these uh, little outrigger wires um, to really hold it sturdy so I can pull on it and it can withstand the strain without moving. Now, I gotta show you what I just found in the yard. This is a piece, am I in focus? This is a piece of the, uh, the beer can that I just shot. And that was old beer, by the way, I'm not wasting it. Uh, it was, it's gone bad. But look at the, you see like how it's got this embossed lettering, this embossed lettering on it. That is from the front of my projectile. Look at how perfectly embossed that is. Like just perfectly stamped into that aluminum. That's kind of cool. All right, let's fire this again. I noticed in the slow motion footage that this projectile is exiting the barrel so fast that even at 960 frames per second, which is 20 times slower, once it plays back at a normal rate, it's 20 times slower than real time. And this thing firing is still too fast to see. It's probably around four, maybe 500 feet per second, which is, might seem slow if you're familiar with vacuum cannons. You know that they can actually reach above the speed of sound with very lightweight projectiles like ping pong balls. This one goes slower because I'm firing comparatively very heavy projectiles uh, with the end caps. If you did put a ping pong ball or something like that in this cannon, it probably wouldn't go quite as fast as some other vacuum cannons because this is a two inch diameter. And for a ping pong ball, you really want a one and a half inch diameter to be a tight fit. Um, but maybe if I fired a piece of styrofoam or something like that, I could go faster than the speed of sound. If you enjoy my videos, please consider supporting them on Patreon. I'd really love to be able to keep making these videos without relying on things like sponsors um, and YouTube advertising, which is just going so far downhill in the amount of money made per view. So if you can afford to support me on Patreon, please do. Check out my page anyway. I'll, I'll have a link in the video description below. 
Um, and just thank you for watching. Please leave comments below. I enjoy reading them. That's like a highlight of my day is reading the comments on my videos. And I do read them all. I still read them all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.